Well, with coronavirus cases rising across the U.S. and in Europe, the impetus for health screening that is accepted across international borders is going to be key to the recovery for the travel industry. But a debate is emerging between the CDC and industry professionals on whether passengers who test negative before an international flight should still quarantine upon their arrival. Common Pass is an app that is currently in trials with United Airlines, where passengers take a COVID test before getting on their flight, and then the data is stored in a QR code that is shown at the arrival destination. Now, it's part of an effort backed by the World Economic Forum, the WEF, to create consistency and standards in global travel. Joining me now is Paul Meyer, CEO of the Commons Project, the nonprofit heading up the app. Paul, thank you very much for joining us. Please take us through what exactly the ecosystem will look like. Do you get tested? How many people will accept the results? And will this facilitate travel more freely? Well, that's certainly the goal. We want to make travel easy, and, but make it also safe. So we've built a, an ecosystem of, of labs where people can go get tested. We're uh, working with now many airlines. We began trials uh, with Cathay Pacific between Hong Kong and Singapore and United between London uh, and New York. We'll be rolling out additional trials with additional airlines this month and next before broad scale deployment across multiple routes beginning from January. The idea here is that people, it's almost like a health passport, right? It's a, it's a certification that you are healthy, that you should be able to kind of conduct business or travel more freely, but it should come at a cost, right? Can you take us through the economics behind it? How exactly when travel industry companies like airlines and hotels take this, how exactly do you pay for it? Well, it's a free service for people um, and it always will be. Um, but I do want to step back. There's... What we're attesting is that people have been tested, um, and eventually, when they start to get vaccinated, we'll be able to actually let them convey their vaccination records. We can't guarantee that people are healthy or don't have COVID. This is all about reducing risk. So what we're basically saying is people can get a PCR test, they can get an antigen test, eventually they'll be able to get vaccines and be able to demonstrate that they've had, uh, had, uh, had those things for reducing risk. All right. So, so, so ultimately, then, who, who exactly will kind of foot the bill? We, we know I can see a world, Paul, where, where, where the cost of these testing protocols are paid for by the airline companies and then in some way perhaps passed to the passenger overall. So so maybe like ten dollars, 20, 30 dollars of my ticket fare or my hotel room or my train fare or something like that is part of this kind of testing process. Is this something that we could expect to see for the for the coming years and decades? Will there be more of a focus on, on this type of pandemic prevention protocol, and will we pay for it? I think the cost of the testing ultimately will be borne by the passengers. Um, and I think as testing becomes more and more available uh, with more and more locations that one can get tested, that's something that will be the responsibility of passengers to take on. In terms of the cost of our platform, it's a relative, it'll be a relatively low um, uh, fee uh, that uh, the airlines um, will likely incorporate into as a, as a small add-on uh, to the cost of the ticket. Now, now Paul, uh, before we let you go, let's talk a little bit. You mentioned the ecosystem before. What exactly is the next step for the Commons Project? A and how exactly do you go about convincing both companies and governments that this is kind of like the right path to take to make sure that the economies around the world stay open longer because of a virus pandemic? Well, I think you know, most of the airlines around the world are really converging around this sort of approach. I think with governments, governments have a really tough challenge. They obviously want to reopen. They want to allow commerce to resume. They want tourism to resume. But they also have a responsibility to protect their, pop their, protect their population's health. So what we're doing is we're giving governments a model that allows them to trust health information from another country. If you can't trust information from another country, you don't have much choice but to either have travel bans, quarantines, or test on arrival. Uh, but if you can actually have someone get tested before they get on the plane, before they come to your country, and have confidence that that person actually did get tested at a reputable lab, that gives a country more confidence to begin to open up. So that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to give countries a, a, an option to be able to have more confidence to be able to begin to relax quarantine restrictions and allow, uh, allow their borders to begin to open up. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.